Um, so I'm going to talk about high order solvers uh, in MFEM. Uh, and this talk is not really going to be so much about um, research or, or methods or those sort of things, though those topics are very interested. And if you guys, if anyone wants to talk about um, those things, feel free to, to reach out uh, or ask after the talk. Instead, it's going to be more uh, about um, kind of like a tutorial, how to use the facilities that, that we've made uh, available in MFEM and um, what problems they're suitable for and, and, and so on. Um, so to begin with, uh, before we talk about uh, high order solvers, I want to talk very briefly about high order discretizations, or at least motivate um, why we want to use them. Uh, we saw a lot of really cool work using high order methods um, in, in a lot of the talks today. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of repetition. Um, so, in, you know, on smooth problems, you can get very high accuracy with high order methods. Um, on problems with singularities, if you do HP refinement, uh, you can get uh, much better convergence than with low order methods. Um, even for advection dominated problems, which may have uh, very sharp features or discontinuities shocks, um, where you might think uh, the lack of smoothness will make them not so useful, actually higher order methods have proven to be, to be quite useful because of their uh, low dispersion, uh, low dissipation and, and resolution for small scale features. And, um, you know, Rob Rebin mentioned in his talk, one of the main reasons uh, we're interested in higher order methods is because of computing architecture. Uh, the higher order methods have high arithmetic intensity and you can get a lot better performance on, on the GPUs. So um, this is just one figure illustrating this. This is from um, a paper that we have on uh, incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. And these are some of our, our GPU kernels. It's throughput on the y-axis, uh, problem size on the x-axis, and then different orders. And we get you know, higher performance as we go up in order. And, and these results are already somewhat out of date. Uh, we've improved these kernels uh, and get even better performance, but the trend is the same, uh, increasing performance for, for higher methods. Um, this is uh, an example of a benchmark problem for the compressible Euler equations, uh, double mock reflection using a, a higher method with convex limiting. And um, the thing I wanted to show here, it, it, it's a relatively coarse mesh, but you get a uh, good resolution of this uh, secondary slip line. Uh, this feature here is um, kind of subtle and it, it's hard to capture using low order methods. You also get a good resolution of um, the Kelvin Helmholtz instability on, on the primary slip line. Um, these are some images from uh, our incompressible flow mini app uh, and the, the advantages of high order have been demonstrated um, quite extensively in, in the literature uh, for incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, and this is an example of HP adaptivity on a problem with, with a steep gradient. Uh, so these are kind of um, just examples illustrating uh, these, these reasons why we, we would be interested in pursuing higher order discretizations. Uh, but of course, there's always a catch. And, and one of the catches is that it's difficult to solve uh, the linear system, the resulting linear system you get from, from higher order methods. So one reason why it's difficult to solve is that uh, they're poorly conditioned. Uh, the condition number, uh, it will depend on the problem and your basis and, and, and the discretization method, but it will typically scale to something like P cubed over H squared or P to the four over H squared. So as, as P goes up, this gets pretty bad. Um, the matrices are, are big and, and a lot denser than, than low order methods. In general, you have uh, the order P to the six non-zeros in, in 3D. So that's a lot of memory uh, on a GPU, it's too much memory. And it's expensive to form and assemble these matrices. It's at, at least P to the seven, if you're very smart about it. Um, typically a, a naive finite element code will, will have P to the nine operations in 3D. So, um, I mean, even for relatively low orders, this becomes a prohibitive. Uh, and even if you address these first three problems, the same classical methods don't always work well. You know, we know they work well for low order. Sometimes things go wrong uh, for high order. Uh, so there are issues. And um, in MFEM, uh, we're hoping to address these issues and uh, uh, make the solutions to these problems uh, readily available and as easy to use uh, for our users as possible so that you don't get um, trapped by those issues. So, um, before I talk specifically about the higher order methods, I'll just briefly give a, a list some of the, the solver methods. MFEM has a ton of solvers uh, available. Some of them are suitable for high order. Some of them aren't. We've got a ton of iterative methods. We've got sparse direct methods. 
including uh, uh, distributed mem memory parallel uh, direct methods. These are probably not so well suited for, for high order. Uh, and we have um, good integration with, with multigrid and, and AMG methods, including on the GPU. Uh, so Hyper, AMGX, Ginkgo, we have our own geometric multigrid. And a lot of these are going to be suitable uh, for higher order problems, as we'll, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to discuss um, a few options that we have for, for higher order solvers. Um, this isn't uh, capturing absolutely all of them, but it's probably the, the main ones. Um, so we have HP multigrid. Um, the model problem here is uh, diffusion, but uh, multigrid has been applied to, to almost every problem under the sun, so uh, it's quite flexible. Uh, it's matrix-free, and it, it works on the GPU. Uh, we've got lower to refine solvers. Um, the model problems here are uh, H1 diffusion, uh, curl curl problems in, in um, H curl, and grad div problems in, in H div. And these are, are matrix-free and, and work on the GPU. Uh, for curl, curl curl, we also have a matrix free AMS um, that's a little bit different. Um, and, and again, that's on the GPU. And for advection dominated problems, um, it's a little bit harder. The situation is, is not as good as for uh, elliptic type problems. Uh, but we do have some options that are good for high order, uh, but they're not matrix free or on the GPU yet. Um, so we've got a block ILU, um, which is really good for, for DG type discretizations. And this approximate ideal restriction, uh, which is a type of, of AMG, which is also good for, for advection dominated or non symmetric systems. And so, you know, we really would like to have uh, check marks here, but I think this is an, an open area of research. It's not really well known what solver methods are, are the best there, um, both in terms of uh, how can we do things like um, sweeps matrix free and how can we do them efficiently on the GPU. So to begin uh, with multigrid, um, MFEM provides a flexible ba base class uh, called multigrid. Um, this is, if you use this class, then, then you bring your own hierarchy of operators, prolongation operators, smoothers, core solvers, basically everything. You bring all the, the building blocks and it puts it together into a V cycle or a W cycle. Um, but to help you out with some common cases, uh, we have a derived class geometric multigrid that works on a hierarchy of, of finite element space objects. Uh, and this supports both H and, and P uh, refinements. So in this picture, you start with a coarse mesh uh, with a low order space. Uh, you do one geometric refinement and then, and then one P refinement. Um, and the multigrid works on, on those types of hierarchies. And it's illustrated in, in our example 26. Um, if you use this geometric multigrid, then you construct a finite element space hierarchy. It's a, an, op, an object that we provide. Uh, and it will give you, this will build for you the prolongation operators. You don't need to provide them. Uh, and these are automatically matrix free and uh, some factorized and work on the GPU and, and all of that. Uh, and for smoothers, uh, you choose which smoother you want, but we have um, Jacobi, which works matrix free. So you assemble the diagonal without assembling the matrix. Uh, it's some factorized, so you avoid those, those bad scalings with P. And we also have uh, Chebyshev acceleration. Um, so I will briefly uh, just illustrate um, this example. It's example 26. Uh, here it's example 26P, the parallel version. Uh, it comes with MFEM. If you look at the code, the first class is, is called diffusion multigrid. Um, and so you inherit from geometric multigrid and then um, construct basically at every level you have to tell it uh, what operator you want to construct and what smoother you want uh, and at the courses level you you create a course solver so here for instance it, it would create a, a chebyshev smoother um, but as soon as you ask for something like chebyshev smoother this will automatically be uh, matrix free it will be some factorized and it will be on the gpu if you run on the gpu so i've got some some sample runs here um, just to kind of illustrate this is uh, doing H refinement. So here, GR is the number of, of geometric or H refinements. And, and, you know, you can, every time I'm running this, I'm increasing the problem size and, you know, you get the classic multigrid behavior of, of constant iterations. Um, and you also have uh, a P refinement. So here, 
I'm changing the OR, which is the, the number of order refinements. And so this is uh, order two, this is order four, this is order eight. And um, you get some, some increase in, in the number of iterations as you go up in, in, in P, but it's um, still you know, very reasonable. And you can do things like combinations of HP refinement in, in one higher case. This is doing both three geometric refinements and three order refinements. Um, and of course, the, the parallel example works um, on um, in parallel and just the same. So this is a, a big problem, about 5 million uh, degrees of freedom, and it's just running on, on my laptop. Uh, and so this is an example of, we, we, you know, we all know multigrid works well for diffusion problems, but it's, you know, pretty easy to set up an MFM and, and it works well. And, these are some 2D problems, it, it works just the same. You give it a 3D mesh and it will work just the same. Uh, so that's multi-grid. Um, now I'll talk about lower order refine. These are solvers that I worked on uh, a lot. And so the idea here is that you have a high order operator. You apply its action matrix free. You don't have an assembled matrix. So when you build the preconditioner, you assemble a low order matrix on an auxiliary uh, refined mesh. And under some assumptions, uh, the low order matrix and the high order matrix for operator are spectral equivalent. So then you can use your favorite classical preconditioner on, on this LOR system. You know, so whatever, whatever low order uh, solver that you're used to using, you just use the same one and, and it should work well. And so here's some pictures of, of uh, what it looks like. You start have a coarse a higher order problem on a coarse mesh and you construct a low order problem on a refined mesh. Um, and in MFM, we also support uh, mixed meshes, uh, curved meshes, uh, 3D, 3D mixed meshes. Um, in some of these cases, you're not always going to get a great uh, preconditioner. That depends on more assumptions, but you can always create uh, these low order refined problems. Um, you can do HP adapted uh, meshes, and here you get these kind of crazy uh, non matching meshes, uh, but the preconditioners actually also work in, in these cases. Um, so these are, are very easy to use. It kind of might look intimidating, like, okay, how do you create a problem and discretize on, on a mesh like this? That's kind of weird. Um, but Ampha makes it, uh, attempts to make it very easy. I think it, it, it succeeds in making it very easy to, to build these solvers automatically. We have classes called the LOR discretization and LOR solver. Um, and there's a mini app that demonstrates this capability on, on diffusion on uh, Maxwell, GradDiv, and, and DG. And um, in, in Serial, it will use a direct solver for, for the low order problem, just why not? Uh, but in parallel, if you really want a scalable solver, then, then we can use a hyper. So you can use Boomer AMG or AMS and ADS and, and get truly a scalable uh, solver uh, in parallel. And constructing these guys is a one-liner, right? So this is, this is how you create if you have a high order bilinear form with some boundary conditions, then this is how you create a, a, a direct solver built using uh, the low order system. Okay, and this is how you create a, a scalable solver built on um, Boomer AMG. So it's, it's just a one-liner. So um, again, I'll, I'll show the, the uh, mini app. This is LOR solvers mini app. Um, the, most of this mini app is just constructing the problem. So here, you know, we do the standard MFM thing. You create the finite element space. This mini app supports H1, Nedelec, Ravier Thomas, and DG. So there's kind of <laughs> different functionality built in here. Um, but you create the finite element spaces. You create the bilinear forms. We haven't done anything having to do with solvers. And then here are the solvers. It's just it's just a one liner. Um, this is the serial version. In the parallel version. Um, AMS and ADS needs a bit more information. It's not based on just the operator. Uh, so it's not a one-liner, but it's like a two-liner. Uh, you create an LOR discretization in, in one line, and then, and then you create a, um, either an AMG preconditioner or ADS preconditioner or AMS preconditioner using the, uh, the, the lower to refine discretization. So it's like two lines. Um, and so I can kind of show these guys. Um, I'm running very low on time, so I'll just run. Uh, 
one of these guys, this is um, all of these work with with uh, device GPU. This is running using the libc. Change directories. This is running using the um, libc backend. So all of the backends that Mthem supports, it works. Here, if you noticed, I ran on a 3D curved mesh with order 16. Um, and just so we can see what, what this looks like. Okay, so here's, here's the curved mesh. Uh, it's a coarse mesh. There's the, there's the solution. And then the lower to refine problem is defined on, on this guy. So it takes the curved mesh and subdivides it into, into a low order problem. Um, advection dominated problems, as I mentioned, it's, it's more challenging, but we do provide this block ILU zero with a minimum discarded fill ordering uh, and uh, approximate ideal restriction AMG. And both of these methods uh, perform sweeps, at least um, local on processor sweeps. So they'll converge immediately if there's a perfect uh, triangular ordering for advection problems. And so I'll just show um, one of these guys. So this is um, example nine DG advection um, running with a big time step. Normally the default time step takes, uh, I think it's like one E minus four or something like this. This is time step 1.0. Every time step, it's it's one iteration because uh, because it identifies an ordering uh, corresponding to a sweep, and then it does a perfect solve. If you run in parallel, um, then it, it won't do. It doesn't do a parallel sweep, so it won't be one iteration. So this is a three D problem, uh, order three with with two refinements, and the convergence is is quite good even with this uh, large time step. And you can try with like periodic. Uh, meshes which also have these cycles or curved uh, velocity fields where you, you'll get cycles so i'll just show the periodic square in this example even in serial there's no perfect ordering um, but the, the solver still converges uh, quite well um, and so um, this is this is with air but you can you can change the solver with a flag to do ilu zero and i'll just uh, show the code very quickly because my time is basically up uh, the main thing here is air is constructed as a, a boomer AMG, just like normal AMG solvers, but then you do set advective options. And there are some options about pre-smoothing and post-smoothing there. Um, they allow you to customize it. But this basically makes the AMG work for non-symmetric problems. Uh, and for block ILU, you construct block ILU, you tell it the block size. So that for DG methods, it's like the size of your elements. And you tell it to order with a minimum discarded fill so it identifies um, those those sweeping orders. Um, great. So that's uh, that's all I wanted to show. Um, I'm happy to take any questions, uh, feedback, suggestions.